And of course, that outraged thousands of right-wing conservatives for suggesting that some women might enjoy sex. Now, joining me to talk about all the political news this week is Republican strategist Lenny McAllister, author and journalist Amanda Marcotte, and Jay Thomas, actor and host of The Jay Thomas Show on Sirius Radio. Is this a panel or what? Wow. Welcome. Uh, great to have you all here. First thing, the Mitt Romney bounce. It didn't happen when he clinched the nomination, didn't happen when he picked Paul Ryan, didn't even happen at the RNC. Barack Obama gave him his initial bounce. Um, but after the past couple weeks and seeing the last two debates, let me start with you, Lenny, as my token Republican friend. <laughs> uh, has Obama gotten out from under what he created? Has he come out on top? Is he finally seeing the surge he's been waiting for? Who, President Obama? or, or President Romney? Obama, yeah. Well, I, I think both of them are not going to get the type of surge they thought they were going to get. I mean, again, Romney didn't have that much room to bounce with. The, the, the pool of undecided voters is small. Mm -hmm. So what Governor Romney's looking for, and I don't think we would see this until November 6th. If there's a hidden Romney vote, it will poll for Obama and go vote for Romney because they'll look at those last economic numbers and say, I like the guy that's in there. I think the guy that we're going to put in there is going to be a little better with this economy. So I don't think we may ever see the true Romney numbers if the polls look the same way mm -hmm. and if the economy looks bad this time next week. So you're saying Romney's hope is people lying to pollsters? No, his, well, that's number one. Mm -hmm. He's hoping that the, there are folks that are going for Obama, but when those numbers come out and say, hey, unemployment's still at 7.7%, 7.8%, people are jumping out of the workforce, hey, I think we need a change. You hear him saying, using the word change a lot now, yeah. and that's what he's trying to imply. You need to change the nice guy from the White House to somebody that can get the economy back going again. Amanda, is the Romney momentum or the mitmentum, if you will, real? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the problem with using the word momentum in, in politics is it sort of implies that you're moving forward instead of at the most maybe gaining a little and hitting the ceiling because mm -hmm. people aren't going to change their minds this late in the game. I want to take a look at Mitt Romney on the campaign trail this week. And Jay, I want your thoughts. If I'm elected, no, when I'm elected, we're going to... We're going to We're going to replace Obamacare. We're going to take that $716 billion and put it back in Medicare where it belongs. We're going to replace Obamacare, except the parts I like, and the dollars that was fraud and waste is going back to fraud and waste. Is that what he just said? You know, it's, it's just odd. He's a gosh darn guy. He doesn't drink. Uh, the other guy's a big Catholic. I mean, I can't believe that we're talking the 21st century and these two whites are running for something. Uh, I just I just think it looks like 1955. I, I don't, I can't, I can't imagine. These are the most unmodern people mm -hmm. I've ever seen. They're, they're medieval almost. Uh, they don't believe in abortion. Uh, uh, they like gay people, but they don't want them to get together. It's, it's really odd. I just believe Barack Obama looks like the future of the United States. And I've always said it. I just don't know that the people that, that he really can help are going to get out in the number to vote. And I'm really worried, and I feel right now that Mitt Romney has a really good chance of winning the election. I you want to almost shake people to go, look, all the people that the Republican guys say they hate, the ones that need, you know, entitlements or whatever. I'm afraid you're not going to get out and vote, and mm -hmm. you're going to get your ass kicked uh, by by these two idiot white guys. So, do you believe Obama's fighting back the way that the Democrats keep telling us? We hear him using the word that, that Mitt Romney's a and Rolling Stone. Yeah, sure. We hear the, the Lena Dunham uh, tape right there. We see Obama fighting really hard in the two debates. Is he pushing back? He may be going after. I mean, I, now you're saying it. I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> the people I'm thinking about say. And um, <laughs> they, they probably watch uh, Lena Dunham. So I, I think maybe he's, he's, got, he's got me, and your guys have you, and he's got you. But maybe there's a group that he's going, get up off the couch, put your joint out, and, you know, come vote uh, so we have <laughs> yeah, medical marijuana. I, I don't know. I would never bet against Obama in a, a get-out-the-vote race. Like yeah, the, okay. yeah. What people forget in 2008 was he was, like, almost magical. In his uh, Howard Dean there. was magical in 2008. <laughs> he had a big ally there yeah, he threw away. Yeah. So <laughs> with that said, though, 2008 was history-making. This is just an election. Now, granted, it's a historic election. We have a lot of things we have to go after. But when you have a chance to make history, versus just selecting a president. And if you think about how that's even termed, selecting the first black president in 2008 is never going to happen again. And some of those folks that Jay talked about went out there and voted because they got caught up in that. They should have. 
but they're also disappointed by that guy. And the bottom line is people will still, in a secret ballot, go vote their wallet. And that's why mm -hmm. I'm saying you may or may not see that hidden Romney vote if these economic numbers coming out next week look as bad as they've that's been. That's very true. And before we go to, we, we got to go to break, but you're very, it's a very good point because it does take more than four years to clean up eight years of elephant dung. Uh, more with my terrific panel in just a second. And still to come, I'll sit down with activist turned filmmaker Sonia Nasseri Cole of Afghanistan and comedian Tom Green. like you could use some help. Well, this is the first day on the job, and there's supposed to be another waitress here, but she hasn't got here yet. Oh, that's a shame. Wait a minute. Ta-da! Oh, welcome back. I'm here with my fantastic panel, Amanda Marcotte, Jay Thomas, and Lenny McAllister. Okay, we just saw the Roseanne clip, and I showed that because the big demographic we're hearing a lot about now for this election is the waitress mom, the term for that coveted female swing vote they're using this year. Not soccer mom, not security mom. So since we're talking about women, Lenny, Lenny let me go to you. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about by waitress mom? Well, some may say that we're talking about blue collar workers, single moms, younger moms, people that are going into a second act and trying to bridge over this economy. But I'm going to also sit there and say that this is one of the ways that they're trying to talk to the poor. We have a lot of Americans. Who's that they? Are, Who's they? I, I'm talking about political operatives, okay. particularly I would say the Obama campaign more than the Romney campaign at this point in time. Oh, you don't say really? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. You have to have at some point in time a conversation about more and more Americans slipping into poverty. Everybody wants to talk about the middle class, everybody wants to talk about homes. But if you're a waitress mom and you never owned your home in the first place, and now you had to go pick up a second job waitressing after previously working $10, $15 an hour, full-time job, lost your benefits, somebody needs to talk to you. You need somebody to quote unquote feel your pain. That's a phrase we hadn't heard in 20 years and that's their way of trying to do that through this new phrase. So, uh, Amanda, if the Republican Party is going for the waitress mom, shouldn't we be calling the waitress mom the voting against my own self-interest mom? Yeah, and it's not going to work. I mean, over 60% of voters that made under $30,000 a year voted for Obama in 2008. They never vote Republican. They never will vote Republican. Oh, you don't think poor people don't vote Republican? <laughs> Some do, but the majority They do in fly, fly over, what they call flyover country. They absolutely, positively do vote Republican. Some of them do, but if I think if if, if People under thirty thousand a year were a state; they would be bluer than Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Not, not if you talk about Missouri. Not if you and traditionally Missouri, and we won't even get into Todd Aiken, but traditionally Missouri and some of those other states. There, those are red states yeah. that are good. <laughs> Hard-working blue-collar people, some of them off, and, and well, they still have s Republican senators, Republicans, congressmen. Yeah. So you do see it. There is a, there is a target well, audience to go there with. Yeah, you. and I'm happy to get into Todd Aiken, but however, we got someone even better. We we out Aiken Aiken this week because speaking of female troubles, of course, Obama received yet another gift from Republicans this week. Take a look. I struggled with it myself for a long time, but I came to realize life is that gift from God, and I think even when life begins in that horrible situation of rape that it is uh, something that God intended to happen. Wow. Jay. Jay. Well, it's amazing to me. I mean, uh, to me, that guys that have put it under evil, that have put his picture in the dic dictionary. I mean, these are terrible people. Um, and the God thing and the separation of church and state went, went out the window. So if I were running against him and he said something about God and I said, don't ever say God again, it's against the law to talk government and God. So stop it. In it's Indiana, in, you would say that? It's in the Constitution. Yeah, but yet there's also the First Amendment. You're allowed to talk about God all you want. You're never going to get the separation. Not in the same context of a law is there because of God. Yeah, but I would That's go a different route, Jay. separation of church and but state. But if I was his opponent, I would say, by the way, separation of church and state is the conservative point of view. That's what our founders intended. And right. where do you get off saying that God doesn't prevent the rape, but shows up a few minutes late like FEMA just in time for the fertilization? Because that's what he's really saying. Yeah, well, but What's funny is his opponent is also pro-life. Is a pro-life Well, you have yes. to be, yeah. You, yeah. You, you're, and you're talking about Indiana. I don't know if this is evil, more just not smart, not wise, and sheltered. It goes back to the type of candidates that are coming out in these races nowadays. More often than not, the either word they're, they're race either extreme. Is, the word they're rape is an extreme. attack word. It's like this woman was grabbed, beaten, I, Jay, and raped, I'm not, and the guy I'm not, goes, Gee, you know, that's what God intended. I'm but, thinking, but no, that's no, no, Jay, crazy but, what, but what we're talking about is when you're separated from seeing and dealing with people that go through those type of scenarios, you now look at it from a philosophical standpoint right, that says these are real people going through real complex situations. You find yourself 
on a debate stage saying something like that. In fairness, mm -hmm. he's also looking at it through a male standpoint, the, exactly, which is the problem level, we're talking yes. about, rape yeah. and abortion and women's reproductive freedoms. He's never going to be raped and find himself pregnant, and that's so, just never going to happen. But here's my question. <laughs> Wouldn't it help Mitt Romney to cut this guy loose? If Mitt said, vote for the Democrat like George H.W. Bush did against David Duke in 1990, wouldn't it help Mitt Romney with women voters more than saying I'm going to cut I'm taxes. from Louisiana. Um, this is a real bumper sticker. We had Edwin Edwards. Yeah. And it said, vote for the crook, not the Klansman. It's important. That's not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Edwin Edwards has just gotten out of jail in the last couple of years. He was a real live crook. Mm -hmm. And that was the bumper yeah. sticker. That was easy to do because he's a... A, a sure, big and a KKK but, but dragon. If Mitt Romney keeps running around avoiding reporters' questions about this guy, all his state his campaign released a statement saying he disagrees. But he's avoiding reporters questioning him about it. I mean, Lenny, if you're Mitt Romney, don't you think it helps me to say don't vote for this guy, cut him loose? That's offensive what he said. Number one, if you've already had a hard time ginning up the conservative base for months, if you've lost primaries to Herman Cain, Michelle Bachman, Newt Gingrich, Rick Santorum, mm -hmm. I can oh, continue I down this list. Mm -hmm. And you finally got them on your side. Do you want to start talking about Republicans now, rather than putting out a statement saying you disagree but with I the statement? But I thought we're going for the middle now. The etch sketchification is in progress. Well, he also is trying to distance himself right now. Right. Try to say, I disagree with the statement. I do not want to talk ill of any Republicans 10 days or so before the election. <laughs> and by the way, I'll keep my ad out from now. I'll sunset the, the TV ads that I have in Indiana, and I'm going to focus elsewhere because I should have Indiana in the back already. Well, the other so, thing is that Romney is, is trying to fight off the the narrative that he's a flip flopper, that he has no central core, no principles. So the last thing you can do is flip flop there. You're right. Suppose a Democrat said, "Yes, um, uh, abortion is is killing a baby," and then went on from there. Would you say to Barack Obama, oh my God, you should, you should... Uh... There are Democrats who are opposed to abortion rights, and, yeah. and they are welcome in the party. I think the Democratic Party is yeah, actually a bigger Yeah, but if you use the word kill, sense. they don't say kill. I mean, it's, it, it is, whatever you want to say. It's, it's, it's maybe a heart's beating, whatever. It's a fair term to use. But, it, but they don't. So if, but if a Democrat said that, the Republicans, you know, uh, somebody over on Fox would be saying, well, why doesn't Barack Obama, uh, you know... Uh, uh, not speak of this guy or mm -hmm. cut him out of the equation. It'd be the same thing. You just, you, if it it, helped, it's if what it you have. Yeah, if it helped Barack Obama, he would have to do it. And I think Lenny's right that cutting him loose wouldn't necessarily help Governor Romney. We're almost out of time. Really quick, I'm going to ask for predictions. What do you give it, Jay? Who do you think is going to win? I'm really nervous. I think I think Romney will, will win, and I think the economy turns around on its own, whether Barack Very Obama is, is president or not. Amanda? Yeah. Um, I predict that Obama has it pulled out before the uh, central time uh, <laughs> returns come in. And Lenny, really quick. If, if Obama gets the whole East Coast and gets one of those Midwestern states, Romney is going to be the next president if he gets the East Coast and one of those Midwestern states. Thank you all so much. And when we come back, I'll be with activist turned Afghanistan. Nasri Cole. Great panel. Thank you.